So uh, we're ready. Oh, yeah, phone uh, ready. Okay. Yeah, speak up. All right. Hello, everybody. We are Virgil. We are a smarter emergency management platform for decision making support using machine learning and real time communication. I'm Alex Cordover. I'm Alberto Rios. So, the motivation for our project is that you've heard it in the news. There's currently poor emergency decision making due to lack of information on the ground and what we call the human element. So, we propose a two faceted solution. First, get decision makers the information that they need to make good decisions. And second, use mathematics to optimize scarce resource allocation. We hacked on three sponsor, three sponsor technologies, Telestax, Telnix, and Fax.io. We'll go through kind of their contributions to each of the, uh, to our, to our uh, project. Uh, other core technologies, we built out a custom API to support each of the uh, three sponsor technologies. And this is a Docker Compose based deployment, so it's immediately scalable. You can kind of see our Telestack sequencing here. But at a very high level overview, volunteers and managers sign up for the service. On the ground information gets transmitted into the system. We compute scores for each region and allocation, use simulated annealing to optimize the resource distribution, and finally redistribute that information back to the people who need it. A quick overview on the allocation optimization. We kind of came up with our own cost function and our own you know, machine learning approach. So a cost function is defined in terms of proposed allocations, social vulnerability information from the CDC, live on the ground information, and disbursement. Uh, cost. We want to keep resources close to vulnerable areas. So let's go through a demonstration. That is not on the screen. So we will do this. So you can see the uh, platform right here. You can see that we currently have computed the uh, optimal resource allocation for a variety of different places. That's up. That's shown in our uh, heat map right here. Now. At the very beginning, we asked uh, uh, quite a few of y'all to submit your information. You can see all of you have populated into our database right here. Now, what happens? Uh, now we're in the middle of a disaster. What happens if you're on the ground? We're going to submit it. Uh, we're going to submit an assessment. You can submit an assessment in three ways. First, you can do it through the web. Second, you can submit it through Telestacks. Or, uh, sorry, through messaging. And third, through uh, call. Both of those are supported by Telestacks. Now. As he uh, goes through the process of, um, yeah, I just sent that latest text right now. This uh, latest text right here is uh, from him, Alberto Rios. You can see the timestamp right here. Uh, and then as he goes through the process of calling, this will update again. You'll see another assessment. Um, so this name field actually uses a telemex like caller ID uh, API. So that's how we can get like people's information. Like not everyone is has caller ID like enabled, but I obviously do. So you can see voice and SMS have populated. That gives us more information with which to optimize our resource allocation. So now that we've submitted an assessment, we are currently running a cron job to kind of optimize this on the fly. So one of the good things about simulated annealing is that it will optimize on the fly. We get continuous updates of resource allocations. And so as more people give us more information, we can be more sure about what the best place to put the resources is. Uh, sorry, put the resources are. So now let's say that we've just had another, or we at some point in this, since it's running on a two minute cycle, we have updated these resource allocations. We're going to send out a blast through email, fax, phone, and text. Fax, particularly because we're working with governments and you, we all know what governments are like. So we're going to send out a blast. And so now all of our judges and people that we ask for information should be getting stuff right now. Yep. And so while that happens, you're all, you should all be checking your phones. You got a phone call. Um, we can just no, get them. That's an email right there. That's a text right there. Yep. And we did get, we do send out faxes as well. So we look at the faxio. Uh, you look at the faxio dashboard. And everybody is getting uh, their calls and emails right now. So if we look at the faxio dashboard really quick, we can see that the number has gone from 14 to 24 faxes. We've sent out faxes to everybody who was populated in the system. Some things we might want to do in the future. Sure. We've looked at uh, last night. We kind of looked at neural networks for damage assessment. That was something a little bit beyond the scope, but ideally, we'd be able to video some 
uh, video damage uploaded and then use that as uh, information to further remove the human element. So that's Virgil. Excellent, well done, John. Right. So, well done. Where do you see this, you know, being, you know, who, you know, would this be something like, uh, like a crowdsource type thing, an open, you know, where you have it on the internet where everybody could go? Right. So we were we were playing around with that idea kind of in our heads. On the one hand, we want to keep the information in as high quality as possible, so maybe limit it specifically to emergency managers. But on the other hand, crowdsourced information is so valuable at this point, I feel like that could also be useful yeah, for the right registration. I got my boat and it's right here. Yeah. Right? Okay. right. The one thing we were worried about is everybody's going to see their situation as kind of worse than somebody else's. And so the more trained a response is, which is why we're, we were interested in using neural networks for direct damage assessment, or move the human element further. But we just want to make sure we're getting high quality information to do the optimizations. Yeah, my house is flooding, you know, it's every yet three inches or feet, feet right? Right. Okay. right. Any other questions? Yeah, if you're interested in this, um, I, you guys talked about how you may have, might approach um, filtering the back, filtering the alerts in order to relevant people and right. so, spamming and also. Right, like obviously. Not everybody has a fax, not everybody wants emails, so in the registration you should be able to choose how you receive your alerts and go back and... Oh, sure. Sorry, but I mean even in terms of, for example, that, you know, volunteers are broken up into teams oh, and... Oh, right. You know, I understand what you're saying. Bringing, so, you know. yeah, ideally we would want to use geolocation information to send targeted updates to people who are on the ground in that area. That's actually why we asked people to put in there zip code uh, in a future iteration of this we would ask people or we would only target people who are near a near uh, an optimization change to move or to that a resource allocation improvement had been calculated so there is we we do very much support that the other thing that we support is this is already uh, nationwide we have all the data from all over the nation we just used Alabama and Mississippi for demonstration purposes but this is equally applicable everywhere um, a disaster may strike sorry I was so, filming and doing six things at once what's the time frame on the real-time communication as far as lag or anything for so the, the so you saw the fields populate as soon as he made the call in the text you saw people get the update almost as soon as we hit the update field the only thing that takes a little bit longer is the actual simulated annealing process, but as long as that's on a central server, uh, which it is, it's behind a custom API right now, as long as that's in a central server, it won't take more than, you know, a couple of seconds. And then that allocation gets distributed to the people who, or the information about the allocation gets distributed to the people who need it, who need to make decisions, et cetera. Thank you. Perfect. Excellent. Thanks so much, guys. Very cool. much.